feeling. That's the last track we just that's how it sounds as long as we didn't write them. So first we write down what is sample space after that we can do more. So sample space, you can write down after that we can go for example. The collection of all possible outcomes, the collection of all possible outcomes, collection of all possible outcomes, collection of all possible outcomes, written in the set form, written in the set form, written in the set form, is called is called the sample space is called the sample space of that experiment called the sample space of that experiment space of that experiment so we'll take an example example Write down, write down the sample space of, write down the sample space of, write down the sample space of the experiment, write down the sample space of the experiment, tossing a coin, tossing a coin, write down the sample space of the experiment, tossing a coin. So what we do, we write down all the possible outcomes. So when you toss a coin, what are the possibilities? We can get a head or we can get a tail. Those are the possibilities. So we have written down all the possibilities. Then sample space means written in the set form. So you put the curly brackets. So it becomes the set, set of all outcomes. So that's the sample space of Right. To write down all the outcomes, put the curly bracket so it becomes the sample space of that picture. Example, write down the sample space of rolling a die. Rolling a die. Write down the sample space of rolling a die. Write down the sample space of rolling a die. So when we roll a die, we can get number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, or number six. All possible outcomes written. Put the curly bracket. It becomes the sample space of rolling a die. The so next example. example. Write down the sample space of. Write down the sample space of. Tossing two coins. Write down the sample space of tossing two coins. Write down the sample space of tossing two coins. Two coins. Tossing two coins. So when you toss two coins, first coin will give you outcome, second coin will give you an outcome. So how can we write? First coin head, second coin head possible. First coin head, second coin head possible. First coin head, second coin tail possible. First coin tail, second coin head possible. First coin tail, second coin also tail possible. 
So those are the possibilities. Put the curly bracket, sample space of crossing two coins. So here, this represents the first coin toss. So this is first toss. And this is the second toss. First toss, second toss. So now, uh, if you take uh, like tossing a coin twice, right now this is tossing two coins. So tossing a coin twice also will be same format, right? So one coin you toss twice. So first toss head, second toss head possible. First toss head, second toss tail possible. First toss, to first toss head, second toss. Ah, first toss tail, second toss head possible. Tail, tail, possible. Same way. Only thing is the way we define should be different. So here it will be first toss. Sorry, first coin, and this will be second coin. Same format, right? Tossing to this is tossing a uh, two tossing a coin twice. This is tossing two points. Same outcome, right? So next example, write down the sample space of, write down the sample space of tossing a coin three times. Write down the sample space of tossing a coin three times. Write down the sample space of tossing a coin three times. So now three times. There will be three instances under each table. Right. So right. head, head, head possible. First toss, second toss, third toss possible. Then head, head, tail, possible. Head, tail, head, possible. Head, tail, tail, possible. Then tail, head, head, possible. Tail, head, tail, possible. Tail, tail, head, possible. Tail, tail, tail. Put the curly bracket. It's all together. Eight possibility are there. So <clears throat> when we write these things, like if we do it in a systematical way, then it is easy. We don't miss out anything. So what I did is like you, two pieces. I know how to write down, or we learn how to write down all the possibilities for two pieces. Head, 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 tail, tail, head. Tail, tail. So for two pieces, we know how to write down all the combination. Now we have three pieces. So what I did is first I fix the first one to head and wrote all the combination for the second and third. After finishing, I changed the first one to tail and wrote all the combination for the second and third. So without missing anything, we got it. Right. So we have to do it in a systematic way, then there won't be any Right. So eight possibilities are given. Right. So now one coin you toss one time, right? So coin one coin you toss one time. How many possibilities? Two possibilities. One coin you toss once, two possibilities. One coin you toss two times, how many possibilities? One coin you toss two times, how many possibilities? Four possibilities. Right. One coin you toss three times, how many possibilities? Eight possibilities. Oh, oh, eight possibilities. One coin you toss four times, 15. Right. Then five times, it will be 30. 
two, right? So likewise, you are going on. If you trust the coin n times one coin, if you trust n times n is any number, then how many possibilities? Yes. Is it n squared or two to the power? So look at the sequence two, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, two to the power of four, two to the power of five. So it will be two to the power of right. So one point you toss n times two to the power of n. So now we said two to the power of n. So what is this n? How many times you repeat it? So number of repetition. So this is number of repetition goes as the power. So this is this two. What is this two? That is in a single trial. How many possibilities? So same thing you are repeating. So in a single trial, how many possibilities? That is that is this two. Right, so that's how you get this two to the power of n. Okay, right. So now this will be in a single trial. How many possibilities? The power will be how many times you repeat. Now, suppose you are rolling a die, you are rolling a die five times, you are rolling a die five times. How many possibilities will be there? Five times you are rolling single trial, six possibilities. You are rolling five times, so it will be six to the power of five possible combinations will be there. Okay, right. So now we know how to draw the samples, but how to write your sample space. So next we'll move on to how to draw and get the probabilities. The next example. Consider tossing two fair coins, two fair coins, and draw the sample space. Consider tossing two fair coins and draw the sample space and draw the sample space. Using the sample space, find the probability of getting. So we have five parts, they are subparts. Both heads, one head, at least one head, at most one head, no. So three things we are <clears throat> trying to learn. One is how to draw the sample space. Next one is what is meant by at least and what is meant by at most. So how to draw first? So two coins we are tossing. We can take the two D diagram. 
along the x-axis, we can take the first point outcome. Along the y-axis, we can take the second point outcome. If you want, you can interchange these two know-how. So first coin, what are the possibilities? Head is possible, tail is possible. In the second coin also, head is possible, tail is possible. So first coin head, second coin head possible. First coin head, second coin head possible. First coin tail, second coin head possible. Tail, tail possible. So that is the representation of the space. So first part, they are asking us both x. So probability of probability of both x. So practical approach. Totally, how many are there? Four. In how many we are interested in both x? So this is the only outcome that we are interested in. So what more to say? Then second one. Probability of only one head. One head. Second one. Probability of one head. So one head means it is only one head, right? So, classical approach. Totally, how many are there? Four. And in the, how many we are interested in? One head. So, this has two heads, not counted. This has one head counted. This one, one head counted. This one, zero heads, no heads, so not counted. So, these are the two outcomes which are counted for the second. 2 over 4, of course, we can't simplify it to 1 over 2. So, always we'll try to put in the maximum simple version. So, next one, at least. So, what do we mean by at least? So, at least is right. At least is something like this. Border and above. Border and above is at least. Border. Border and above. At least. Border and above with at least. At least one head means one head or more heads. At least one head. One head or more heads at least. So at most, at most is border and below. Border and below is at most. Border and below. Border and below at most. At most one head, one head or less than one head, one head or less than one. Maximum you can have is one head. Right. So at least border and above, at most border and below. So 
the next one. Let me put it over there. Third one. Probability of at least, at least one head, at least one head. So one head or more heads. Right. So this has two heads counted. <laughs> one head counted. One head counted. This has no head, so not counted. Border and above one head or more heads. So these are the three events which are considered for at least. Totally, there are four. We are interested in three, right? Two heads counted, one head counted, one head counted. This is zero heads, not counted. So three out of four. At least one head or more heads. Then fourth one. At most probability, at most one head. Probability at most one head. Totally, there are four. We are interested in how much in, right? So, at most one head means one head or less than one head. This has two heads, not counted. One head counted. One head counted. Zero heads counted. One head or less than one head. So these are the three events which are considered for at most. So that is also three over four. Right. At least border and above, at most border and below. At least one head, one head or more heads. Two head counted, one head counted, one head counted, zero head not counted. So three over four. At most, border and below. At most, one head, one head or less than one head. Two head not counted, one head counted, one head counted, zero head still counted. So three. Then the last one, no head. Probability, no head. So no heads. This has two heads. This has one head. This has one head. This doesn't have any head. So that is the only element or only outcome which has no head. So it is one more head. Yeah, what do we mean by at least? What do we mean by at most? Border and above at least, border and below.
So now we are ruling to that. Sample space, draw the sample space using the sample space. Both even one universe at least one. Six by six. Both even, one even, at least one even, one even number, right? At most one even number. A sum equals seven, addition should be seven.
plus one. Both two and both even. So two two possible. Two four possible. Two six possible. Four two possible. Four four possible. Four six possible. Six two possible. Six four possible. Six six possible. Both even. Both even numbers. So there are nine possibilities out of thirty six. Nine possibilities out of thirty six. Probability. Is there the first part? Probability both even classical approach. Totally, there are thirty six we are interested in. So that is one over. So I have just copied six diagrams, so you won't have to draw six diagrams two or three, like with the same thing and I like one or two parts. Right. Mm -hmm. Both even. Right. Both even. Second one is one even, one even. So one number even. So what are the possibilities? One even. One two possible, one four possible, one Six possible. Two one two three two five possible. Two two not possible plus two events. Right? Two one two three two six. Three two three four three six. Four one four three four five. Five two five four five six. Four six one six three six one. Those are the possibilities. One even. Probability. One even. Totally there are 36. We are interested in 18 out of that. So it is one over. So next one. At least one even. At least one even. 
minimum one even number should be there. At least for the value. So now, I now the individual is the next thing now. At least one even we should have. So get all of these two. So if you take this column, anyway it is having two. So one even is already there. If the other one is odd, you get one even number. If the other one is even, you get two even. Yes. At least one even means one even or more even, which means everything from this even column two counted. Four, if you consider same story, already you have a four, so one even is odd anyway there. If the other one is odd, you have one even. If the other one is even, you have two even, so everything counted. So from two, everything is counted. From four, everything is counted. From six, everything is counted. Not only the columns, other way also the same story applies. Two, so anything from this two, anything from this through four, anything from this through six counted. So all these are. Okay. So at least one even. So you get hold of an even number. So already you have one even number in this column. If the other one is odd, still you have one even. If the other one is even, you have two evens. Anyway, it is counted. That means everything is counted. So likewise, you can go for four and six. Same story, you can go for the true source. So only nine elements are not considered, or nine outcomes are not considered. All the other ones are counted. 27 upon 36. One, probably we have one even, but at least one even. Probability at least one even thirty six twenty seven three over So we are not considering only both odd cases. One, 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 three, one, five, three, one, three, 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 five, five, one, five, three, five. So at least one even. Next okay. At most one even one. Probability at most one even. At most one even. So how to identify one? At most, maximum you can have is one even number. Maximum one even number. So at most one even, so at most maximum you can have is one even number. Now get hold of a even or number. So one number is anyway or now can say this one, this color. Anyway, one number is odd. Other one can be odd or even. 
If the other one is odd, you don't have any even numbers. If the other one is even, you have one even number. We are going for at most one even. So one even or less than one even. So everything from this column counts. Similarly, everything from these three counts. Everything from five counts. Same story the other way. Everything from one counted. Everything from three counted. Everything from five counted. So those are the elements counted, right? You get order of one, at most one even. So what? If the other one is odd, you get no even, stay counted. If the other one is even, one even counted. So that means everything from this column counted, everything from this column counted, and so on. So again, we are considering the 27 elements out of 36. So three over. So totally there are thirty states behind just any so oh, fifth one, a sum equals seven. Addition should be seven. Fifth one, probability. Some equals total should be seven. So, what are the elements which are considered for a total of seven? So, six plus one, seven, one, six, two, five, three, four, five, three. Sorry. Uh, 4, 3, 5, 2, and 6, 1. So along this diagonal, all the elements are considered. This, this. Is this, that, that. So those six elements are out there. So we have six over thirty six one over. Totally, they are thirty six. We are interested in six. So finally, a sum more than sum addition more than eight. Sum more than. Eight. So sum more than eight, more than eight, so it is not counted. About a nine and on. Probability some more than eight. So what are the elements which are counted? So here 
Six and two, eight, not counted. Six and three, counted. Six and four, six and five, six and six, counted. Five and three, not counted. Five, four, five, 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 six, counted. Four, four, not counted. Four, five, four, six, counted. Then three, eight, five, not counted. Three, six, counted. So here, four, three, two, one, all together, 10 animals. Uh, 36, 10, can be simplified, five over. 10 elements are counted. 9 and onwards are counted. So here, 6, 3, 6, 4 counted. 3, 3 counted. 6, 2 counted. And this is counted. So those are the nine elements count, sorry, ten elements counted. Four here, three there, two here. More than eight. So those two examples tells you how to draw the sample space and from the sample space, how you get that probability. Always, if it is simplifiable, giving the maximum simple question. So I can ask that is the same thing. But next, we we'll move on to rules of probability. <laughs> rules of probability. Rules of probability. So there are four rules. There are four rules. So you have to clearly know the rules and where we can apply, especially where not to apply. Because certain rules you can apply for any case. Certain rules under certain conditions only you can apply. For uh, those, those conditional rules, if you use for the condition where the condition is not satisfied, you will get answer, but the answer will be a wrong answer. So rules should be known with we are to apply and especially we are not to apply. So if you are not sure of the conditions, don't apply the wrong, right? Because if you apply, you will get an answer, but that answer will be a wrong answer, right? So there are four rules, so one by one they'll discuss. So rules of probability, first rule. Rule number one, addition rule of probability. Rule number one. Addition rule of probability. Rule number one. Addition rule of probability. Addition rule of probability. Right. So before going into the rules, now see here we are using the notation union intersection right so how do we read these things in probability we'll write down that we learn that and then we go for the formula right okay so under underneath you can write it down this way right probabilities are defined for probabilities are defined for probabilities are defined for 
events. Probabilities are defined for events. Probabilities are defined for events. And events are considered as sets. And events are considered as sets. Events are considered as sets. Are considered as sets. In sets, we come across in sets. We come across in sets. We come across the two operators. 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 Union. Union. Intersection Union Intersection Union Intersection right. A Union B right. you know, A Union B A Intersection B right. this right. so Union and Intersection when these operators continue, when these operators appear, when these operators appear inside a probability formula, when these operators appear inside a probability formula, inside the probability formula, we read them as, we read them as, so this intersection you read as end. Right? Intersection you read as end. Union you read as O. So intersection you read as end. Union in the last form. When, when these operators appear inside the probability formula, right? Now, well, what does it mean? See, if you have this expression, so this one, how we read? We read this as a union B. Why here no probability involved? So this is a union B. But the same thing if it appears appear inside a probability formula. Now this one we read as probability A O B. Right. So this is union. It has no probability involved. Now, same thing appearing inside the probability formula, then you read as probability of A O B. Right. So similarly for intersection also, same story. This one you read as A intersection B. Intersection B. But the same thing appearing inside the probability formula, then you read as probability A and B. Probability A and same thing, same concept, same uh, uh, area or same uh, component, but uh, we read as over time. If it is simply appearing as usual union intersection, if the same thing goes inside the probability formula, then it is a union. A.
Okay, so now <coughs> keeping these things in mind, we go for the formula right now. So what is this? So this is right. addition rule of probability. On the left side, what we have A union B, but that appears inside the probability formula. So probability of A or B. A union B means what? This is A, this is B. So A union B means this A. A union B means this area. So probability of this equals probability of A. So you are covering this part, probability of A. Plus probability of B. So you are covering this part. So when you say probability of A, you are covering this portion. When you say probability of B, you are covering this portion. When you say probability of A, also this part is covered. <laughs> when you say probability of B, also the same part is covered. So this particular portion is covered twice. This is the A intersection B part. So since this portion is covered twice, you are removing once. Minus A intersection B, right? Very simple concept. So this formula, no restriction, you can use for any case. Right? Whenever you want to find a union probability, you can use this formula. No restriction. Rule number. Okay. No restriction. Whenever you want to find a union probability, you can use this. I will take a simple example. To use the form. The full problem is there. A check on the quality of all the items produced by three shifts at a factory during a certain day. Given here. So these are the questions. If an item is selected at random, what is the probability that it is grade one? It was produced by shift X, it was produced by shift Y, O, shift Z, it was produced by shift Y, O, grade two, quality or produced by shift.
Now, so here the information is given in a tabular form. In a tabular form. So when the information is given in the tabular form, each column can generate the event, not the total column or the total row, other one, right? Other one. Here we have three columns, we have three rows. So when the Information is given in the tabular form. Each column can generate the event, and similarly, each row can generate the event. So, in the column, they are talking about the shift from which the production is done. Shift X, shift Y, shift Z. And this way, they talk about the quality of the item grade one, grade two, fault. So since there are three columns here and three rows are there, there can be six possible events, six possible events, three from the three columns and another three from the three rows, right? So what are the possible events? So first we identify that, after that we can go with this process, example, I mean the questions, right? So here, shift X, shift Y, shift Z. So they are talking about the production. So through which shift the production is done, right? So you can have something like
shift x. So reduced by shift x. So one possible event is reduced by shift x. So we'll denote this by x, right? Y, because if you want to say probability of reduced by shift x, you don't have to write a lot of statement. If you take this as x, you are just write PR x. Yeah, right? So otherwise, you have to write a long statement probability of reduced by shift x. So now if you put it this way, then PRx. So produced by shift x. So similarly, we can have produced by shift y. We'll take this that y. That one produced by shift z. You know this by z. Then this way, grade one item, grade two item, faulty item. So we'll say G1, Roman letter one, G1, grade one item, G2, grade two item, and F means. Forty grade one item, grade two item, forty item. Yes, forty So now we will check. If an item is selected at random, what is the probability that it is grade one? Right. So we have introduced some notations. So we'll go with those notations. So first part, probability of grade one, G one. Probability of grade one, right. So classical approach, totally how many are there? 400. And we are interested in grade one. It doesn't matter from where it comes, grade one. So we got 761, so 208 such items, grade one. So we are interested in 208. So both are even numbers, so we can simplify. So if you simplify by your two here, you get 52 over 100, 26 over 50, 13 over 20. Maximum simple version. <laughs> Turn one. 
it was produced by shifters. So it was produced by shift. Second part. Probability produced by shift text. PR text. Probability of produced by shift text. Right. Totally, how many are there? 400. We are interested in how many produced by shift text. Doesn't matter, grade one, grade two, or 40 coming from shift text. 130 such items are there. 140. So we can simplify by a 10. So we get 13 over. Next one, it was produced by produced by Shifwayunze. Right. So, third one, it was produced by YHOZ Union O. So probability of produced by Y O Z. So union, no restriction. We can apply for any thing. So we have the formula in terms of A B. Instead of A, we have Y here. Instead of B, we have Z here. So we just amend and apply. So probability of Y plus probability of Z minus probability of Y and Z. So probability of produced by ship Y. Ship Y. 160 out of 200. 160. Probability of produced by shift is there. 110 over 400. Minus probability produced by shift Y and produced by shift Z. Y and Z. We don't have anything like that. Either it should be coming from Y or it should be coming from Z. Nothing coming from two ships. So out of 400, we have zero numbers. Right? We don't have any zero. So if we simplify, we get 270 over. Hundred, which can be further simplified to seventy over four hundred, so that is twenty seven over. Now, if you take this. One. This value is zero. And probably zero over four hundred is zero. So that means this and probability is zero. Right. So we have a special term for those type of events. Right. So uh, and probability is zero. If A and B are two events 
A and B are two events such that probability A and B equals zero, then A and B are said to be mutually mutually exclusive events right if the and probability of two events are zero then if the and probability of two event is zero then those two events are called mutually exclusive so mutually exclusive means both cannot happen together. Both cannot happen together. So that is mutually exclusive. Both cannot happen together. So if you take, say, tossing a coin, two events are getting a head and getting a tail mutually exclusive. If you get a tail, you don't get a head. If you get a head, you don't get a tail. So both cannot happen together. So mutually exclusive. Right. So here in this example, we have produced by shift Y, produced by shift X, produced by shift Y, produced by shift Z. So though X and Y mutually exclusive, Y and Z, mutually exclusive. X and Z, mutually exclusive. It can't come from the other, right? So any two columns, if you take, they are mutually exclusive. So not only columns, row also same. If some item is grade one, it can't be grade two. If it is grade two, it can't be faulty. So grade one, grade two, mutually exclusive. Grade two, faulty, mutually exclusive. Grade one, faulty, mutually exclusive. So row wise, mutually exclusive, column wise, mutually exclusive. Row and column, no, it can happen, right? So they are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so mutually exclusive means both cannot happen together. <coughs> so, right, third one is that. Fourth one. It was produced by ship Y. Y O grade two. <clears throat> the probability Y O grade two. Reduce by shift Y O grade two. <coughs> Union O probability. No restriction. You can apply the addition rule. Probability of Y plus probability of G2 minus probability of Y and G2. Probability of reduce by Y, 160 out of 100. Probability of grade 2, grade 2, 161. Doesn't matter from where it comes, 161. over 400 minus y and grade 2 y sorry y and grade 2 we got 72 such items out of it. so now see for this calculation we took this 160 70 is included 72 is included we took this 161 72 is included so this is double counted so we are removing one 
It is faulty or produced by shifting there. Faulty or produced by shifting. Faulty or produced by shifting there. Union, no probability, no restriction, addition rule can be applied. Probability of F, probability of Z, minus probability of F and Z. Now, probability of Freddy, probability of faulty, doesn't matter from where it comes, faulty, 31 out of 400. Probability of reduced by shift is that 110 out of 400. Faulty and produced by shift is that we have seen such a thing. So, rule number one. No restriction. Whenever you want to find that or union probability, that will be the The next, we'll go for rule number two. So, rule number one, no restriction. Whenever you want to find a union or all probability, you can go. So, rule number two probability of opposites or complement. Rule number two probability of opposites or complement. Six or complete. So we'll write down the sweet notations there. Right. Let A capital A, let A here, we're going to take out. Let A capital A, let A be an event. Let A be an event. Let A be an event. Then, then the complement of A, then the complement of A, complement of A. The complement of A is denoted by, is denoted by either, either A bar or A dash. It's denoted by either A bar or A dash. As sometimes we call this as a prime hamster. So 
opposite one. You can call this as a dash or sometimes a prime. Sorry, prime. This is a bar. Like bar. Like this. Right. Complement. The complement means what? The opposite. Right? The opposite. Uh, say, Raining is the event. Complement is not raining. Right? The opposite of that. Raining, not raining. It's a complement. Uh, if you take winning, winning the match is the event. Then the complement will be losing maybe. He and I get the opposite way. No, I thought of winning now. Not winning. Because two events are there. It can be a draw, it can be a. If you can lose or you can, it can be a draw, right? Both are possible. So whatever given, complement, now you just say not winning, not winning. Training, not winning. Then you are on the same side. You don't have to consider what are the possible. Purpose, right? Let's say whatever you want, just say not of that, then it will be the complete, right? Okay. That's yeah, we can make it better. Yeah. Right. So A dash denoted by this or okay. that. And the probability of the complement and the probability of the complement and the probability of the complement. Probability of the complement. Is given by probability of the complement is given by this form. Probability of a dash equal one minus probability. Probability of a dash equals one minus probability. So we take a simple example for this. Example. If the probability of winning the match is the probability of winning the match, if the probability of winning the match, the probability of winning the match is 0 0.69. If the probability of winning the match is 0 0.69, what is the probability of not? Winning the match. What is the probability of not winning the match? If the probability of winning the match is 0 0.69, what is the probability of not winning the match? So how do we get 1 minus 0.69? Point. The probability of a dash, right? Same thing, same way you can like. Probability of a dash equals 1 minus 0. 0.69. So it's 0. 0.31. Next, rule number three. 
independent events. Independent events. Lower number three. Independent events. Well, first, we have to understand what type of events are independent. So now this is the restricted formula. You can't apply this for all the cases. Right? If you apply this for any case, you will get answer, but that answer will be a wrong answer, right? Okay. So this formula is true only for independent events, right? So independent means what? So first, let me give you an example. After that, we'll define independent. Now, say you are tossing two coins. One event you are defining as getting a head in the first coin. Other event you are defining as getting a tail in the second coin. So getting a head in the first coin has nothing to do with getting a tail in the second coin. Getting a tail in the second coin has nothing to do with getting a head in the first coin. So those two are independent. So two events become independent, say A and B. A and B becomes independent if A has nothing to do with B and B also has nothing to do with A. Then they are independent. It should go work either way. A has nothing to do with B. B has nothing to do with A. Then they are independent. Both ways it should work, right? Otherwise, sometimes, a has nothing to do with B, but B, B may have an influence over A. In that case, you can't say they are independent. Independent and another, they have a interaction, interaction, right? A has nothing to do with B, B has nothing to do with A, then only they are independent. Okay? So this is true only for those kind of events. If you use for any other event, still you get an answer. You multiply the problem, you get an answer, right? And that answer will be a probability like answer, but that will be a wrong answer. So, before applying this, make sure the two events are independent. Otherwise, don't have. Okay, right. So, first we'll write down the independent, after that we can use the formula, right? Right. <laughs> Let A and B, capital B, capital B, let A and B be two events. Let A and B be two events. Let A and B be two events. Then, then A and B are said to be, then A and B are said to be, then A and B are said to be independent. A and B are said to be independent. A and B are said to be independent. If the occurrence of A, if the occurrence of A does not have any influence, if the occurrence of A does not have any influence, does not have any influence on the occurrence of B, does not have any influence on the occurrence of B, and, and occurrence of B, occurrence of B does not have any influence, occurrence of B does not have any influence. On the occurrence of A, on the occurrence of A. Occurrence of A does not have any influence on the occurrence of B. Occurrence of B does not have any influence on the occurrence of A. Independent. Example, example. Consider tossing two points. Consider tossing two points. Consider tossing two points. And the two events, and the two events, it is worth 
getting a hit in the first point. It is the first point. Getting a hit in the first point. Getting a hit in the first point. Inverted from a star. Getting a hit in the first point. And getting a hit in the second point. And getting a hit in the second point. So it may be head in the first point, head in the second point, still they are independent. Head in the first point, tail in the second point, independent, right? Head in the first point, Mahamura uh, Vipa Krishna, right? Head in the first point, tail in the first point, head in the second point. They are independent, right? Or they are, right? That's two different points, right? Okay. Uh, then these two are independent. Then these two are independent. And these two are right. Okay. So now we go for that arm. So next para, if I don't know. Let A and B be two independent events. Let A and B be two independent events. Then Probability of A and B equals probability of A into probability of B. You can simply multiply the two probabilities and get the end probability. Probability of A and B is probability of A into probability of B. So this is the restricted formula. Under that independent condition only you can apply. If the two events are independent, apply this. Otherwise, don't apply this. Okay. So now we'll take an example which covers this rule number three and rule number two. Right, rule number two, we didn't do any problems, only a small problem. So this example will uh, cover rule number two and rule number three together. That's the example. So I take down after that. Please.
So now, <clears throat> when you read, you have to identify what are the events they are talking about. What are the probabilities given? It's not in regard. So here, first statement by statement will be the probability of a married woman age 32 being alive with 30 years time is 0.69. Okay. So in that statement, do we have an event? Do we have a probability? We have a probability, okay? If there is a probability, the corresponding event should be there. Without a point six nine is the probability, right? So what is the corresponding event? Married woman, age 32, being alive in 30 years time. So that's the event. So we'll make it short. Women alive. So that is the event in 30 years time, 32 years old, all the things are there. So women alive, one event we have. So we'll say women alive. So we'll denote this by W, then it's easy. Right. The probability of W given 0.69. Then, second statement. Similarly, probability of a married man age 35 being alive in 30 years time is 0.51. So what is the event there? Man alive. Women alive. So that is man. Okay, all the other things are there. 35 years old, another 30 years time, all the things are there. So we'll make it short. So man alive. So let's say that is M. Probability of M given 0.51. Okay, that's 51, right? Yeah, I guess it's not getting there. 51, right? Okay. Okay. So then calculate for a married couple, right? Woman age 32, man age 35, right? Probability is that in 30 years time, okay? All the conditions of both the other 32 years, 35 years in 30 years time. Further, it is given, assuming the two events are independent. That means these two events are independent, given. So we can use that, right? So first part, they both alive, right? So we want to find the probability of both alive. Now we have only these two events. Women alive, man alive. Those are the two events we have. But they are asking for both alive. So some combination of these two should generate this, right? Some combination of these two events should generate it. But how can we combine these two to get this? The rapid operators in union intersection. Follow the medical link on the blocking. Both alive. Man living now. Women also should be living. It's not a decama when known, man living and women living. So that is the event that influence. Yes. So if we want to find this probability, we want to find the probability of this. Because this is the only combination that influence. Yes. And independent. Simply you can multiply and get the probability. Okay, right. So we'll define these things, make a defined and then we first. Women alive is W, man alive is M, probability of W given, probability of M given.
the first part. So, both alive. So, this is influenced by M and W, man living and women living. That is the only combination that influences this. So, if we want the probability of both alive, <laughs> we need to calculate this probability, probability of M and W. But it is mentioned that these two events are independent. Probability of M into probability of W. Why? Given M and W are independent. Make a for your reference, I'm writing down. So otherwise, we can't use that formula, the independence formula. So we are using the third formula for the rule. Right. So probability of M even 0.51. Probability of W even 0.89. You got your calculator, so you can multiply. This is two decimal place, it is two decimal place. So when you multiply, finally your answer should go up to four decimal place. Next, second part. Only one is allowed. Only one is allowed. Only one is allowed. We have MW. What combination of M and W will influence this? So suppose man living, then the women should not be living or has to have one. So they come and have a Man living and <coughs> women not living. One option. The reverse also possible. Man not living and women living. So two combinations are there to influence this. So Man living and women not living influences this. And also, man not living and women living also influence this. So if you want this probability, you need to get this probability and you have to get this probability and you have to add the two. Yes. Right? This one influence, this also influence. Get this probability separately, this probability separately, add the two, you are done with this. Okay? We have M and W dash. We know M and W are independent. We don't know whether M and W independent. M and M dash and W independent than other, we don't know, right? But there is a theory that. If two events are independent, say A, B independent, then any combination of those two are independent. A, B independent means A, B dash independent. A dash, B independent. A dash, B dash independent. Any combination will also be independent. So we'll put a note on that. So note. If A and B are independent, then A, 
B dash A dash B A dash B dash A independent means A B dash independent. B dash and B. A B dash independent. A dash B independent. A dash and B dash independent. They can take up independent now. Old mother, that's a simple. So this is influenced by two combinations. So we'll get this probability separate here, this probability Probability M and W dash. So M W dash independent. So we can use the formula. Probability of M into probability of W dash. So this is 0 0.51. This is the complement of W1 minus 0.69. So this is 0.51 into 0.31. So you can get the answer for this. So similarly, you can get Get the answer for the other one also. So probability M dash and W dash. So M dash and W. Dash and W. C2 also independent, so we can use the formula M dash into probability of W. So this is complement 1 minus 0.51 into this is 0 0.69, so 0.09 into 0.69. It does. So finally, we want the probability of only one line. So we know this is the contribution from M and W dash plus probability M dash and W. So we have the two values substitute. Yeah. Only one is alive, is a combination of those two, so it is the addition of the two probabilities.
the five the last year. Four times six. So last one is neither is alive, neither is alive. So what combination neither is alive? Neither is alive. So what combination of that M and W will influence this? Neither is so man not living and human also not living. So that is the event which influences neither is the life. So if you want this probability, you need to get the probability of this one. Because that is the only event which influences. Neither is alive. So if you want this, you need to get probability of M dash and W dash. So A D independent, any combination of those two independent. So M W independent, M dash W dash independent. So we can use the M dash into probability of W dash. So both are complement probability. So we can get the two So this is one minus point five one. This is one minus point six nine. So this is point four nine into point three one. So up to four decimal. So in the Venn diagram, if you look at If you take this to be a same, take this to be a M and this to be a W. This portion represents That portion represents M and W. And they be man living and women living part. Right? Or alive, this part. Then, okay, I use the same color to highlight because two pieces here and there will be there. So this one. Right. So this part and that part is only one is alive, right? This part only man living, 
outside W, so women not living. This part is women living, men not living part. Right? So the same color for so that part is. This is man living and women not living part. And this is man not living and women living part. And, uh, Right, that blue color area that is uh, so that blue color area is the uh, man not living and women not living. Right, so the blue color area is man not living and women also not living area. Those are the properties we found, right? This outside blue color, this part is both not living. This and this, only one living. This one, both living. Okay. Right. So, uh, just to show you the parts. So this is just to play around with the formula, right? So two independent events, X and Y are two independent events. Probability of X given, probability of Y given. So you are asked to find probability of X and Y. Okay, so here it is given in words. So the notation form, this is what you are asked to find. X O Y. Y not X. Y and the intersection X dash, right? That is what you need to find. Okay, so these are the questions. To make the things easy, I have given what you are really asked to find. Two, two events, even x, y, and it is mentioned they are independent, so you can apply.
So here are the two probabilities. If you look at this is 0.3, this is 0.7. So there is no rule that this and that when you add it should be one, right? So methana coincidence I think make a point three or a point seven, right? A my condition. no name my right? Make a complement with no name. This is the second The chance of a flight being delayed is 0.23. What are the chances of no delays on a round trip to go and come back? Assume the trips are independent. So just one more rule to go, the last one, the fourth rule, that is uh, complement event. Sorry, not complement, uh, the conditional probability, right? Conditional probability. So it takes some time to start a bit discussed. So three rules discussed. First rule, no restriction. Second rule, no restriction. Third rule, different. Thank <laughs> you. 